We're so grateful to have your company on the show with us today. Now, the importance of communication in marriage often um, not take seriously is in as many couples tend to think that the daily banter or the lack of it doesn't affect them on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, what really happens is that uh, when this happens, you know, there's usually some kind of uh, uh, a break, you know, in, in the entire relationship. Yeah. Well, our first uh, guest today is a counsellor and a spiritual therapist. <laughs> and he will be telling us the factors, <laughs> a spiritual therapist. Yes, he is. <laughs> and he will be telling us uh, a bit about the factors uh, important in uh, affecting communication between couples. He is uh, Excel Adeleye Samuel, yeah? And uh, I want to especially thank you for joining us today. Thank Joining us me. physically in the studio <laughs> and being a me. part of this show for the second time. Thank you for having me. It's our pleasure. Thank you. Now, how would you say you have effectively communicated? At what point would you say information has been effectively passed on? At the point whereby the receiver understands, not just here, understand what you're saying and he gives desired result. That is effective communication. In desired result, you mean the feedback? The feedback, yes. So do you understand what I mean? Because a lot of people hear, but they don't listen. Now, but we can easily castigate and say, do you know what, you didn't, you didn't hear me. No, no, but did you even communicate properly, hmm. for example? If I'm in Nigeria, for example, then you say something like, ah, yawade. Yawade. In Nigeria, understand okay. what that means, yeah. even if you put it as a word or a sentence. But the white man doesn't even understand what that means as a word. So do the person understand what you're saying? And that just means that sometimes you may need to say it very well, or most times you need to also understand the personality and the person you are talking with. Exactly. So, so if effectively, you're saying that uh, communication has to be well-structured well structured. In terms of the elements, the, the vehicle, the way it is passed across. Exactly. Could you then just highlight for us what are, what are some of the key elements that okay. we should look out for in communication? I mean, uh, uh, fantastic. Um, we all know, as you said, that uh, commun communication, that um, your body language is more than 60% of what you say mm. and all that. Then you hear people, some people say, Ah, that is who I am, but who is the person getting? Or what are you getting okay. at the end of the day? Because it's not about you. It is not about you. Alone. It's about the person. That is why I say to people, for you to effectively communicate, you have to have what I call empathy. Okay. Very key. Okay, I will give you for example. If you come to me and say, you want to pass to me, like I do say in my job, I say, I tell people what is wrong with them, and sometimes I give them very, in quote, I want to use the word professional, though I'm giving a professional feedback, though it looks very harsh yeah. <laughs> as well, but they accept with all joy and they still pay me for it. And I say only because I've mastered how to give it out. So I will say, do you know what? I have noticed over time that this is what you have been doing. I have been making a lot of effort to make your life good. However, report I've shown, and you also have seen, that you are not happy because you have spent 20 years yeah. in the workplace and you are not making what you desire for yourself. So the question is, what is your children going to talk about you? Well, you spent 20 years in a marriage. In a marriage. And you're so, not exactly fulfilled. Exactly. So as I'm saying that, I've, in, I've indirectly told you that you have not been doing well for 20 years. And you need to do something about your life. But don't you think we are, we are making it a little bit technical? Because in a home environment, we expect that communication would be a little easier yeah. You know, okay. would, would, we be, would we have the time to, to structure, structure it? it. Gents, and, you know? yeah. Yeah. You see, yeah. let me say this. One thing we do wrong in relationships is that we take ourselves for granted. Hmm. And then you see somebody who has been in that relationship for 20 years, and they say, my husband does not have to connect to me emotionally. Sure. She's just saying that over the last 20 years, you don't know how to talk to me on this particular matter. 
the kitchen is dirty. It's not that I, don't, I want to keep it dirty, but the children just mess it up. Mm. But you are telling me that woman are married for 20 years, but you are dirty. Wow. <laughs> that is saying it as you feel. Yeah. However, what does the person get out of it? Did they feel good or feel bad about themselves? Mm. Mm. How did they receive it? That's it. Because the intention is actually to bring about some positive change. That's it. So if you miss it in the way you, you know, relate or ask those questions or make the comments and you don't get the result, then um, there's, there's, there's a challenge. There is a now, now this, is, this is basically a family show, like we said um, at the beginning. Um, why would you say that effective communication is critical to the harmony and the stability of the mm. fa family. We're mm. very particular about mm. that. Mm. Because that is the goal. Mm. That's it, that's it. You see, for me, I define communication as a connection. That's a power of connection. When there is no effective communication, there is no connection. And when there is no connection, there is no transaction. There's chaos. Therefore, it is important that individuals, we need to pay attention even how they communicate. We also have discovered that even a lot of people even don't know how to communicate about themselves. They don't even know how to even sell themselves. Now, for example, you meet someone and say, do you know, can you talk to me about you? And even a lot of people even can't define themselves such mm -hmm. that people will buy into them as a person. Wow. So it starts from there. So as a couple or as a family, we need to have a time where you just observe somebody and also understand what they want to hear part time. For example, if, 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 if your wife just like to dress, like I saw your hair, your hair, can you tell your hair even is fine? So what you're doing is that you're beginning to buy trust over time. So the day you say to me, you are stupid, it feels, okay, he's not been saying, can I even manage this? Do you just this? say the hair is fine? <laughs> yes. When it's not fine? Oh, fantastic. You see, <laughs> it is not about being, it's not about lying, but it's about taking cognizance, which a lot of people do wrong. So when I walk into... I saw your brown shoe. Your brown shoe, I should say, hmm, how long have you had this brown shoe? I have shown some interest in you. Mm. Yes. So what happens when people communicate is that they don't even show interest in the other person. They're not even concerned. They just want to give and get out. But I do say this. If you come to give, you'll be rejected. If, no, if you come to take, you'll be rejected. If you come to give, you'll be accepted. So in communication, before you think about what you want to get, are you be mindful of what you are giving? And let's so really, what, what are the key factors that one should look out for to draw the line where you have a breakdown in communication? Oh, that, okay. Oh, at this point, you should recognize that communication has broken down. Oh, um, one of the, one of the, the common one is silence. The person just kept silence from the other on the other. Or the other side. person just it just stopped talking, and you I switch say off. just switch off mm. and. It is known in our practice for any time that a couple switch off, then that relationship is going to end very soon. Or if a partner is switching off from a particular topic, for example, he doesn't like talking about the in-law okay. to his wife, or the wife doesn't like talking about probably our friends to the guy, mm -hmm. something is going to cut off. Now, so there are different books or different departments for individuals. So when they begin to shut one by one, then, like I said, connection is being detached, detached. and there's a danger looming right in front. Well, <laughs> perhaps in this, um, at this point in time, let's just quickly look at what the importance of listening, because you just said that communication is not about you, mm -hmm. you know, and you must take some factors into consideration. And for that person to be receptive, um, it must, the person must perceive that you are also concerned about the position or the point where that person is, that is listening. How yeah. vital is listening in oh, the uh, communication process? You see, uh, listening is a very technical skill. <laughs> it's not just N. And what a doctor, what a counselor, what a therapist get paid for is just listening most times. As a matter of fact, most of the job, 80% of it has to do with listening. If you don't hear or listen to what the person say, you're then going to diagnose wrongly. Okay? Therefore, in listening, you have to first open your heart. Not about your opinion, you see your opinion. Okay. First. Now, what some people do when they are listening is that they are judging the matter, they are bringing their opinion in their head at the same time, and that is very wrong. So, it's not about what I feel, 
It's not about my opinion. It's not, not about my philosophy. Now. It's about the fact that I want to accept you and receive you. That's the first, that's the first law. So if, you, for example, you tell me, am I, are you mad? The first thought I would say, eh, am I mad? I think about it. <laughs> Why did you say I am mad? Why did you ask that question? Why did you say that? Yeah. That has shown honesty that you want to know more. Yeah. By nature, when people want to know more from you, then you speak out more because it's a magnet. So. Okay. okay, so let's, let's even assume that, <clears throat> all right, we have failed in the communication. And there's crisis. All right. Right? And, there's and there's crisis, crisis in the house. Yeah. <laughs> what, do what, you do? what are the next steps? <laughs> okay, and the first thing to do is first to acknowledge that I failed. And you need to communicate that to your partner. Do you know what? I have not been listening to you and I've cut off for this reason and this reason and this reason. Now, based on that, I also am not feeling good about myself and I know you are not feeling good. Okay? And our desire is to make this home work. Our desire is to make sure our children grow up in a healthy environment. Mm. Then we need to pick up this and be a better person. So, as front, I'm going to listen to you. If I need to write, I need to write. I will not even respond or interject or interrupt. Mm -hmm. Okay? Then we can pick it up from there. So will you, you also have to, do the same thing also? You, you eat the humble pie. That is how to go about you it. You dump your ego. And usually that is very difficult. To and achieve. find a lot of time to do this job. That's it. Time is an issue. Very important. Especially in an environment such as ours. Yes. So many things competing for our time. Exactly. And um, in a family, between the husband and the wife, between the children, we yeah. hardly have time. Yeah. And those windows where we can sit together and just talk you know, and yeah. open up yeah. and just be who you are without any pretenses. Yeah. I think for me, in the busy time, you can create a quality time. What does that yeah. mean? Even while you're driving, you're busy at work and you saw a message from your partner, mm. you should be able to create that time to yes. give feedback and all that. What has happened is that once you are a poor communicator or a poor listener, you don't even create the time even if you have a long time. You see a couple will say, do you know what? Let us go on vacation if everything's going to be right. Mm. And they will fight from vacation back home. Mm. <laughs> you get it now? Because they will never resolve that. They will never resolve that. <laughs> so it's more of building yourself first. So when you have one minute or five minutes, what do you hear? For example, it proved that the partner has said, do you know what, last night you were talking to me while I was on bed, and you said this and this. I want to clarify, do you mean this? Or what are you saying deeper? Okay. So that means that after the communication is done, like we say, you are ruminating over that word that is said to give and help the feedback or do something about it. So the wow. communication has to be deliberate. It has to be deliberate. It it's, has, it's, even it's a conscious has to be one. obvious. That is it. That, that you're it. trying to effect communication. That is it. You need to appreciate the other person's position. That is it. You need to get down from your high horse. That is it. You need to forget about your ego. That is it. And you need to connect. That is it. Those are the things you're telling us today. Very key. And you need to be clear. Very clear. You need to be direct sometimes. That, that's it. You know? That's and you it. need to open up. You need to open up. You need to, open up. You need to clear your opinion sometimes. Mm. You need to just, as a matter of fact, most time in communication is not every time you have something to say. Oh. Just listen to the person. Wow. John. Okay. Interesting. We just have a few minutes now, before yes, we, we let you we have a few minutes and um, I, would, I would crave your indulgence. Yes, because I think we've concentrated a bit more on couples. Okay, fantastic. I want to okay. look for a minute, just Please. look at today's generation. Hmm. I call hmm. them the bedroom generation. Hmm. They, don't sit, bedroom they don't generation? sit with you. They sit in their rooms. Hmm. What they, they have would be created, responsible for that? They've created their, their world in their rooms. And you hardly even have the opportunity to be with them, to connect with them, to con communicate with them. They let you know outright that you're probably intruding. Yes. Disturbing their pace. Okay, uh... That's a very good um, question. Uh, we created that word for them. We created it. And we have to take responsibility. Now, when you are going for you know that there's some things you don't do. And you know there's something you should do. It's just based on the word that was created mm. you know, and all that. So, for example, the internet is actually using the people. The people are not using internet. And I do say this. For example, with the children, 
If adults, we know most times, you are not able to be in control of the internet or your phone. How do you now think a child can be in control mm. of the phone or in the internet? Now, so, for example, we are raising generation whereby they will not understand what empathy or communication is because when a child stays in front of cartoon over time, he's not communicating. He's just see some videos doing some mechanical move. He does not understand what communication is at all. So when the child is speaking, then you notice the child even can't speak your dialect over time because that is the teacher yeah. speaking. And when he speaks, he's speaking that direction. Absolutely. So when you now raise a child in that, that with a, 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 on YouTube and all that, with all this, and that child becomes a teenager, automatically you're going to give him something because parents are taking their irresponsibility to create time. Yeah. You get it now? And they're giving the child. So the same thing, a child would, a father would, or a mother would rather buy a child a phone. Wow. So... Parents now need to be deliberate because, this is my concern, when parents are not deliberate around now, you're going to be one day be in the hospital on the bed and your child is going to be with the phone and not paying attention to see mm. that you are dying. You know what, wow. uh, Excel, wow. yes. I think you have just opened up another huge can. Unfortunately, <laughs> we can't delve can into that worms. this morning. <laughs> ah, Thank you. That's a very, very huge one. Ah, thank you so much for I really appreciate finding it. time to join us this thank you for um, on the show today. I really appreciate it. I, I'm sure we have um, touched on some very salient, you know, but very vital areas of communication, especially in the family. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. We wish you the best. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank yes, you so sir. much. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, that's all we can take on this segment. Up next is Eniola Olajobi, who is a child psychologist. And um, after that, we will be back in a moment. Please don't go away. <laughs>